increase a bit the test. much well today we start our study on the it47 that is the optimistic theory alongside the pessimistic the last week eh? pessimistic diabolical <laughs> demoniac yeah wow thanks so that, god that we are now 47 <laughs> yeah we are a little bit more optimistic now <laughs> So alongside the theories that only see spirits phenomena as being the work of demons, there are others that are seen only as the work of good spirits. Such a theories, we start from the principle that being released from matter, the soul is now free of any kind of veil and must therefore be possessed of supreme knowledge on wisdom. However, this blind confidence in the absolute superiority of beings of the visible world has been a source of numerous deception for many people. At their own expenses, they have had to learn to distrust certain spirits, just as they have learned to distrust certain individuals. I think that uh, along the way, we see in both cases, right? The one that thinks everything's bad. And this one in particular that thinks everything is good. That every information that may come from the other world is positive, reliable, trustworthy. And we know from the practice that what Kardak is saying here is very true. There is a lot of spirits that do come with good knowledge, wisdom. But does not matter what they say and who they say they are? We need to be very careful. A medium after work with a spirit after a period of time he will start to recognize the way he speaks, the content of what he speaks, his energy. So it will come with time. But if I'm not familiar with a spirit and let's have a nice name, you can choose one. We need to be careful. Maybe the real spirit, but perhaps could be someone else using his name to do something that on the end is not too positive. He may sound positive at first glance, but if we exercise our analysis with reason, with caution, then we may find that it's not really the case. Yeah, it's Christine from, <clears throat> sorry, it's Christine from Australia. Oh, Christine, um, I've seen you already. How are you doing? <laughs> pretty good. Cold, but pretty good. <laughs> yeah. um, just where we've talked about spirits before and that how you are here when you disincarnate, basically the same. So you could say that if a recently disincarnated spirit um, has been quite, mischievous or um, isn't, isn't, um, doesn't have good thoughts and, and doesn't do right by people, could be the same in the spirit world. I can guarantee you that one incarnated spirit, when he passed away, he is exactly the same what he is on earth, on the spiritual world, there is no difference. He won't get. A, he won't be a better person, and he won't become a nasty person just because he changed the, the body. So, I can guarantee you, if someone that is mischievous 
arrives on the other side and immediately he starts to say that he's no longer mischievous, he is lying. Cannot be, cannot be. This person may well change, but within time, not immediately. Immediately is not possible. There's no magic. There's no such a thing. So. Okay. Thank you. Can I it say is... something about this topic? Sure. Um, I think if we open ourselves uh, to believe that everyone from the spiritual world is superior to us, because there are some people that truly believe that. <clears throat> we open ourselves to be deceived by those that speak half-truths, isn't it? And uh, it's, it is really a delicate point. And it's funny that Christine said about this, because um, also like when people are missing them, uh, the relatives, they also want to have this communication and everything. And because we can't guarantee who is going to talk, we can't guarantee. And being um, attached to wanting to know the name of the spirit, the name of the communication, which is with our study, we are more and more aware that this is not important at all, but the message itself. Um, it is... Um, I know we want to console, but sometimes we need to be uh, very careful in orienting people that want to talk to their relatives as well. There, there's one thing that I think we need to be aware of. Quite often, when our relatives pass away, we, we want to believe that they go better just because they passed away. But that's not the case. He is what he is, here or there. So he won't change from one day to another, right? Another thing is, oh, thank God, he's now resting. Let's hope he's not resting. Because he, if he is resting, something is wrong, right? If we arrive in the spiritual world with the minimal clarity of what the life is, we may stay a couple of days, a couple of weeks in a, in a scenario that would, everything will be blur, everything will be a bit dizzy, and, but then we get, we get on and then we'll start to do something. We start, we continue with our lives. If that's not the case, that status of mind, that emptiness, if I can use that word, may last for centuries, as we see through the mediumship meetings. So that's why it's very important to get acquainted with spirituality. I'm not talking about spiritism, I'm talking about spirituality. We can get acquainted with spirituality in any religion, in any philosophy, in, without any of them either. So the important thing is to get acquainted with the spirituality, is to improve our own spirituality. Another subject that I would like to mention as well is when someone we love, we care, pass away, yes, we would like to have a message. We would like to know, yes, you're right, especially because we have a, I guess that his arrival or her arrival won't be that good after all, because we know what he did here, what she did here. So we would like to hear, oh, yes, yes, I'm okay. <laughs> very unlikely you will get an answer in a very short period of time. It's very rare to have a spirit that passed away and have a communication within days I know people that were very spiritualized here, and even like that, took a couple of months before it could get any, any information that everything else was okay. So this is the kind of thing that sometimes we, we get lost because my father died, I want to know tomorrow, 
if he's okay. You, you won't know. You won't know. I want to talk to my father tomorrow. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And if he does, because we are so desperate to have that communication, chances are that won't be our father, will be someone else pretending to be and then become like a joke, really. So we need to have that idea in our mind. If any, anyone wants to talk about anything here, um, fine, otherwise I'll move to the next one. Bear in mind that I'm not saying that it's not possible to have a communication in a short period after the person is incarnate. It, it is possible, but it's rare, okay? So we'll move on, item 48. The unispirit or monospirit theory. A variety of optimistic theory is the belief that there is only, there is one soul spirit who communicates with human, humans and that the spirit is Christ, the protector of the earth. However, when communications are of the lowest triviality by revolting grossness, full of malevolence and malice, it would be impudent and profane to suppose that they could have emanated from the spirit of goodness by, by excellence. I, I know that uh, he is closer to us than we think. But I also believe that having a direct communication from him would fry my brains, for example. The intensity, the poorness of him must be so great that would fry my brain, my spiritual and physical brain. So I'm not saying cannot happen, but I'm, I'm talking about me. I, I definitely would not have the minimum condition to get a communication directly like that. Not from him. Who would I am? Okay. If those who believe in this theory had received only impeccable communications, we could possibly accept the illusion, but most of them declare that they have received extremely evil communications, trying to explain communications, trying to explain them away as a test to which the spirit of goodness has submitted them by dictating absurdities to them. He is talking about uh, Christ, the spirit, like they said, but in any communication, any, we have to see the product of the communication. It's by the fruit that we recognize the tree. So we need to be sure about the consequences, the actions, what is in the message. And then we'll be able to know if the message coming, is coming from a good or not a spirit. Hi, Ebony, go on. Uh, question, apart from what is written in the gospel about Jesus communicating with the apostles after he was uh, risen, is there any known um, communication from him um, in modern times that you know of that has uh, been proven to be authentic? I cannot even prove that his apparition for the apostles were authentic, but we led to believe that it was because of his relation with them and the need to have a group of people to continue his work. I believe there are other possibilities, perhaps not directly from him, but using his name, following his will, maybe. I think in, in the gospel, I think it's in the gospel, that according to the spiritism, there is one message that people believe was from him, but uh, I will not go down, down in that path. Regardless if it was him or not, what is important is the content of the message. If the message was positive, 
if the master was creating positivity to the world, pushing us to work hard, to do charity, to become better persons, that's good enough for me. If anyone nowadays coming on TV saying, I'm Jesus, I'm here to, to give a message of blah, 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 I will, I will not entertain that. Hi, Munir. Hi, Good morning, everyone. Uh, my, my view is that a spirit at the level of Jesus, or any spirit at the same level, they're so much alike in terms of what they understand of God's laws, universal laws, and their representatives as well. So if Jesus himself came to give the direct message or send someone to do it, it wouldn't be different because the content of the message would be so great we wouldn't be able to, to notice any difference. But the content is pure, is uh, what counts, actually. Many, many people attach you to the figure, to image of Jesus, but what is important is what's, what Jesus represents. And he represents a very a high evolved spirit who fulfills, he understands and fulfills God's laws in every single dot. So if he himself came directly, gave the message, or he sent someone, or if it's another spirit at, at a similar level, I mean, it won't make any difference. The content will be exactly the same, as close to God as an enlightened spirit can be. Something came to my mind, Munir. Speaking with our spiritual friends, more than once, they told me, that Jesus is not too far away as we think. The problem is, how can I reach him? How can I become worthy to, to reach him? But he's not too far away. So, following what Munir said, he's one of, there are so many others like him around the, the universe. Perhaps we even had more than one of his level in earth, but was not the time to bring what he brought to us. Who knows? What we know is that he is the one that managed our, our planet, and I'm very comfortable with that. And when I hear that I may reach him, in my thoughts, in my prayers. That give me some power. What kind of power that can give me? The power to change myself, the power to become a better person, to then be able to eventually reach him. So I think we all have that resource. We all can achieve that. It depends only on us. You know, if I may add, he, he said very clearly, if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say, honor my image, my name, bring me flowers or whatever. He said, keep my commandments. Meaning that if we are to follow him, to take our cross and follow him, we should keep his commandments, honor his life by following his example. There's another point as well, Munir, where two or more people will be together in my name, I will be there. And I felt more than once a massive energy in some spirit mediumship meetings, massive, really massive. I cannot say that was him but was definitely someone closer to him than I am. So perhaps he could not come himself to our meetings, but definitely he sent someone that will work in his name to organize, to prepare, to protect every single mediumship meeting. Not only mediumship meeting, but study meetings, even small reunion, small meeting to help people, because sometimes people do that. 
But this is down to, to believe, and we are not here to convince anyone. But there is one thing that's beyond belief, is what we feel. If we put our finger on a power socket, 200 volt, 220 volts power socket, we will feel the electricity, if we like or not. So when a high elevated spirit come closer to us, <laughs> we feel something. It's not electricity, but we definitely feel something different. Perhaps, I, I believe everyone has that kind of thing once in a while. So if you have a better explanation to tell me what it is, I'm, I'm really willing to learn, but uh, it's a massive experience. Can I just say one more thing, Ile? Sure. Uh, like a, a spirit uh, at the level of Jesus, when he said to uh, some people that he was talking to, you know, if I am explaining this uh, things that is trivial of your day to day, you don't make, you you don't understand. Can you imagine if I explain the spiritual thing? So he will be able to do so many things that we are not even thinking of that only a little bit of the veil has been revealed to us through the spirits and through all this knowledge that we know through spiritism. And, you know, how much more he could be able to do. <laughs> so it's like a level that we are not any, anywhere need to understand. But I do believe that he's there all the time. He's everywhere there all the time. <laughs> Please, that sentence you said, is very actual in our present days. Imagine 2,000 years ago. If that sentence is valid today, 2,000 years ago, <laughs> they could not even understand what he was saying. Today, we don't understand. That's the very truth. We don't understand it today. Otherwise, we would be way better than we are. So, hi, Yasmin. Yasmin? Yeah, sorry. Good, af good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Um, so, Liz said almost what I wanted to say, and just like, um, just to finish on what you said, just said, yeah, I'm like, um, like we, we couldn't understand, maybe we also don't want to understand because it's, if we try to understand, it really includes that we have to, to let behind us a lot of our bad habits and some people are not prepared to that and don't want to do that. But maybe it is not the discussion for today because it goes into the gospel according to the spiritism. Uh, uh, direction so yeah and yeah just like for people if some people who are listening to us might need some more uh, simple explanation it's like um, Jesus is on it's a, at the university level or more and we are at the kindergarten level and we <laughs> we are we still we are still learning how to cut paper within just within the shape and uh, applying colors and yeah the message he sent us was like yeah this is how we read in our in my world and now try your best to learn how to read and how to walk and how to communicate. <laughs> I Thank think you. what you said. <laughs> I think what you said has everything to do with what we are talking about here, because that's very true. We don't want to understand because we have to change. We have to change. In the same way that things in this book is very clear. Things on the Spirit's book is very clear. Things in the gospel, it's very, very clear. But we don't want to do, we don't want to follow. 
So I don't want to understand. Because let's think about ourselves when we were on the school time. On the end of the year, we had to pass or to repeat that, that very same year. And we did everything to learn math, chemics, whatever. We did everything because we had to have the minimum to go to the next year. Otherwise, we had to do again. We stopped going to parties. We stopped watching TV, playing video games. We stopped everything because we had no choice. We had to pass. But in our life, we don't see like that. We don't do everything we can do to pass. So it's better not to understand. And then I'm, I am blindfolding myself because I will repeat. And we are repeating. Every reincarnation we have, we can profit moving forward or we can stay in the same place, reincarnate, reincarnate, reincarnate again. And then we are happy with that. We don't want to repeat a year on the school because we want to move on. But in our lives, we don't bother. I can do that better in my last reincarnation. How many times I heard that? So it is a conflict. We are not prepared to lose one year but we are prepared to lose a life, one existence at least. Thus, while some attribute our communications to the devil, who is able to make good statements in order to tempt to them, others believe that Jesus is the only one who manifests himself, but that he can make evil statements in order to test them. <laughs> really? The day I start to believe in that, I'm, I'm having a problem, right? Because he, he don't have time to waste with that. Not at all. What shall decide between these two very diverse opinions? Common sense and experience. This here, we should have, we should follow through our existence. Common sense. An experience. Because why both together? My common sense may be different than yours. Munir's common sense may be different than mine. Lee's may be different than Munir, may be different than mine. I may agree with part of what has been said, but not everything. So common sense is something relative, proportional to your experience. Through the experience, you will know if what you believe is working or not working. So you may have common sense today about a subject. You go to the exercise. Then the fruit of this exercise will become experience. And then you will be able to validate what your common sense said to you or to improve your present common sense. Because common sense will evolve, right? We have to rationalize everything. And common sense today was not the same as 200 years ago. Could not be, because we are exposed to different things today, right? I'm not talking about righteousness or not. I'm talking about common sense. And common sense is, in 10 years time, my common sense has to evolve, has to, be acquainted to different experiences. So both need to work together. Well, at least that's the way I see. You can disagree. Okay. Sorry, it's Christine from Australia again. Um, just in relation to common sense, I'm not sure what, what's happening in other countries, but in Australia, um, we have different, what we call different levels of uh, generations. And we've got the millennials. And in Australia, we, we say, well, 
the millennials are taking over from the um, the people who are now dying off. The, um, I can't think what they're called now, but anyway, um, they the, some of the generation, quite a significant number. It's like I've just left school. I'm going to join this company, not in the um, at the bottom rung of the ladder. I'm going to be the CEO because that's all I'm going to accept. So the the common sense really and experience of course um it's just like they've got this this uh, level of thinking i'm going to put it that way this level of thinking that they don't have to contribute they don't have to go through any experience to jump several spaces uh if you know if you, you know what i'm saying um they believe they've got all the common sense, they've got the experience, they're, they're worldly and, and they can move faster than the previous generation. That, that's what we're seeing in Australia. Christine, I think that is a global phenomenon. Right? In the spiritism, we know that we have very evolved spirits coming to this planet and we also know that we have spirits that were for too long in darkness also reincarnate among us it, it is a moment where we were expecting that to happen that's why we see today so many antagonism in both senses if i can say like that regardless if that young generation, that, that lad is one of the high evolved or one of the less evolved that are incarnated now. We as a parents, we have the responsibility to tell them into the right direction. That is our burden, if you can call it like a burden, because many of us, we don't really want to be told that we are responsible to raise the next generations, but we are. They will acquire experience anyway, even if they want to jump steps, a moment in time, they will learn because something may be missing. We also have a challenge to adapt ourselves to the different pace that they have because some of them are coming to push us forward. Some of them are here to teach us, regardless if he is my 10 years old kid, he has more maturity, spiritual maturity than I have. So he's a give and take. I will sharp the edges to prepare the young generation to, to raise better, and they will give me something I never had, I, I bet. Some of us, we still have a hard time to play with our cell phones. Some of us don't know how to use computer very much. And we have babies, three years old, that really, really know how, I don't know from where, from where they had that knowledge, right? Three years old kid has better ways to play with the phone than I do. How can I explain that? So we need to adapt. And that's called evolution. That's called progress. There's a law of progress that we cannot avoid. So we need to adapt ourselves and they will, they will learn, they will get experience. Remember that I also have a millennium at home. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so we cite experience because it is impossible for those who adopt such exclusive ideas to have sufficiently verified everything. Mm. I, I think when I hear that here, sufficiently verified everything, none of us, none of us could have evaluated everything enough to be 100% sure about anything. If we have someone say, I'm 100% sure I'm right, you may be right today. 
Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow, science will evolve. Tomorrow, we will get acquainted with a different science, different matter, different status of matter. And I'm saying something that's happening already in our generation. They found a different state of matter. They found different energies. They, they are finding things in a different pace than we ever had when we were young. So what we think we know deserve a second chance. And we have to reevaluate everything we know as a process going forward. When we confront them with cases of identification that attest to the presence of relative friends or acquainted through written, visual or other means of communication, they respond that it is always the same spirit. The devil are calling to some or Christ are calling to others who assume all forms, but they give no reason as to why other spirits cannot communicate or why the spirits of truth would come to fool us under false appearances in order to deceive a poor mother by presenting to be the child whom she is mourning. mourning. Reason refuses to admit the holiest of all spirits would come to put on such a dark comedy act. Furthermore, doesn't deny the possibility of any other form of communication take from spiritism, its kind of characteristics, the consoling of the afflicted. <laughs> we would simply state that such a theory is irrational and could not endure serious examination. As we have to evaluate everything, it's our duty to evaluate everything. And quite often, mediums don't like to be evaluated. When I'm saying that, mediums have problem to allow others to evaluate the product of their mediumship. Because I'm so proud of what I'm doing. I don't make mistakes, you know. How this person is telling my communication is not correct, is not right. Let me share some practical experiences regarding that. We had a mediumship meeting. We had a communication. There was kind of agitated communication. I can say like that. It was very positive in a way. In the end, I could feel the medium not happy with me. I could feel that the medium was like, uh, you irritate me today. Then I start to make questions because I, I like to make questions. I start to make questions. Are you, how are you doing? Are you okay? You're still feeling the presence of the, the entity, the spirit? No. And the person said, you had no right to speak to the spirit like you did. I beg a pardon. Why not? Because he was... He, he, he decided to defend the spirit. And I only ask one thing. I was speaking to the spirit or I was speaking to the medium. And then the person stopped. Because the medium needs to understand that doesn't matter what is the information that's coming through him or her. That information is coming from the spirit. If it's coming from the spirit, it deserves, it needs to be evaluated. But quite often we, we mix the sent, our sentiment with that ability. I said that all the message is coming from the spirit because it's true. But the message may also come from our spirit that we'll see in the future. But that, 
that communication I was talking about was indeed for from a disconnected spirit because I have spoken with him more than once. And we have to be sure that we need to allow ourselves, mediums and indoctrinators, to be open mm -hmm. to evaluation. Otherwise, we could fall into mysticism and to other things that we really do not want. But coming back now, I don't know why I'm talking about that, but anyway. But coming back to the test here, we need to see the product of everything in life and everything in regards to a spiritual communication. If the communication is bringing to us consoling, is bringing to us peace, consoling the afflicted, helping us, pushing us to do good is one thing. If that message is coming with any different perspective, we need to be very careful, very careful, because we may fall. Let's move on to the item 49, the multi-spirit or poly-spirit theory. All the theories that we have examined, including the ones that deny spirit phenomena, are based on certain incomplete or badly interpreted observations. Mm. I think that we always need to keep our spirit open to consider that what we believe we know is incomplete or badly interpreted. I think it's almost like a duty to have that in our hearts because everything is incomplete, period. Everything is incomplete. Everything is evolving. And talking about incomplete, I remember a question that I had not long ago about something written in the Spiritist book. And my answer was, no, the, the question was basically was, was that wrong? My answer was no, it wasn't wrong. At that particular moment in time in history, the answer wasn't wrong. But with what we know today, the answer is incomplete. So what is right today in 50 years time may well be incomplete. So we need to have that in mind. Also, badly interpret observations. We are so fast in make our decisions about something. We are so fast in make our mind about something and someone. Are we? I believe we are. We, we really do that. We judge very fast things, facts. And as a result, my, my point of view at least could be badly interpreted by others, and I will be badly interpreting what I saw. So we need to keep in mind that nothing is cast in stone. Even if we are right, give the benefit of doubt to evaluate again, especially and mainly with a different pair of eyes, because that will bring you more certainty about what you think. If a house is red on one side and white on the other, whoever seen, had seen only one side or the other would affirm that it was either only red or only white, white. And would thus be both right and wrong at the same time. But whoever had seen both sides of the house would say that it is red and white and would be the only one aware of the real truth. The same applies. One thing that came to my mind here now is that even in the spiritism, we have so many people 
defending their truth. Defending their truth. We need to be careful with that. Very careful with that. We cannot do this, we cannot do that. This spirit cannot communicate here. We cannot talk about that. We cannot do it like this. We cannot allow you to do this because you're too young. We cannot allow you to do that because you're too old. There are so many don'ts. I would refrain to the gospel. I would refrain to Kardec's work. And if you do find consonance in those don'ts with Kardec, you still need evaluation. Because as I said, at that time was 100% correct, but things progress. But if it's not there, then we have another problem. The same applies regarding opinions about spiritism. They can be correct concerning certain aspects, but wrong if they generalize what is only part by regarding a rule, but is actually only an exception. Or interpreting as a whole, what is really only a part. We have an expression that we used to say, in theory, my theory, except if there is an exception to the theory, the theory is wrong. In the best case, is incomplete. If there is any exception, well, it does work like that except so it doesn't work like that so we simply did not bother enough yet to analyze every single aspect of that structure that mechanism that cannot be considered as a theory or or else that's why we have started stated that those who desire to seriously study the science must observe it a great deal and for a long time, because only time will enable them to ascertain the details. Notice the delicate nuances and observe an infinite number of characteristics, facts that will shine like luminous rays of light. Gil, it's Christine here. I am. Oh, I just on that point, and I was wondering when to bring it in, and I've sort of your, your mic is closed, Christine. I've had it open because I was going to try and jump in a few times, but this is, sorry, I'm the one that's computer illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, um, this is probably a good point to um, highlight what's said here. I, I saw an example of, of characteristics and when I was talking before about generations and you said that there's more and more um, uh, disincarnates reincarnating and coming here to help push us along, I saw my great niece, who was at the time three years old, walk up to my sister who was sitting on the swing and said to my uh, great niece, come and sit on Nana's lap. And she turned around and she said, you know, I used to do that to you when you were a little girl. I used to get you to come up to me. I used to stroke your hair. And she was three years old. And we all stood there dumbfounded because of what she was saying. And she's just, you can tell she's, she's we all say she's been here before just with what she says, even mm -hmm. now. But um, yeah, just where it, the characteristics and the ray of light, it just struck a chord with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, pay a little bit more attention on her and you find a few other things. I can guarantee <laughs> she will bring more information. Hi, Denise. Denise, your mic's closed. Thank you. <laughs> Just by what we're reading about, I mean, I think 
I remind when Munir said the other day as well that people need to have to know about before they make the talk if it's right or wrong. What about to know the whole before we can say if it's an exception or part of that? I think Munir gave the example of during the COVID, a lady that of PhD in some things started about, uh, talking about spiritism. So I think these apply for every single area of life that before, if you want to have a serious opinion, you have to know what you're talking about. It's just common sense. That's it, yeah. Denise, Thank you. That, that is always life. And uh, yeah, that's very right. It is virtually impossible to know the whole about anything. But uh, we can know 80%, 90%, 95%, even more. And that will give us the assurance that at least um, I am aware of the most of it. And that's the, that's the beginning of a conversation about any subject like spiritism or anything else, if we want to be serious about it. Uh, believe me yep. also adding to that <clears throat> I find important to remember that one of our laws is the law of society and if each one of us has a perspective in life and have to be together and communicate and together find the whole the, the whole uh, reality that is also because one person alone won't be able to achieve that in a small amount of time. And that's why like when great discoveries come about, you, you see more than one person all the time is like that knowledge is latent there, ready to come out and all these minds together uh, communicating. And it's, it's fantastic this, which is part of, of our nature, isn't it? And another thing I would like to say is like, we have with these um, that we just read, like one person will see, no, the house is red. And it's very subjective, isn't it? If you want just to accept, no, my truth, the way I see is the true thing, because each one have a subjective perspective. But we can't generalize that a truth is subjective. We always have to go back to know there is only one reality, but many eyes looking at these at different angles and only together we can find out because some people uh, will say, no, the you know, truth is subjective. It depends. No, there are things, no, the, the truth doesn't depend. It's, it's only a perspective. Liz, you're pushing me to talk about quantum physics. I don't know much, but I know Munir is here to help me. <laughs> I think things are coming. And in, in the last 50 or 100 years, we'll be able to know more about that than what we know today, that perspective, right? And I saw Jacques raising the hand. Hi, yeah. Jacques. Hi, yeah. Um, just to add on to what Liz said, it, my version of truth is this. I think people sometimes when they're expressing that, I agree with what you said and you touched me throughout what we were reading today, the, the where Guilherme, you mentioned about incomplete um, and the history of, you know, what I know today is very different than I knew 20 years ago. And that, that 20 years ago, I thought that that knowledge was at that moment in time, the history was the knowledge, but as, we evolve as we work, as we learn, as we develop, as we make an effort to change. Um, because that's required. One thing you said right at the beginning about arriving in the spiritual world and oh, it's all better. Well, how much effort have we put in to get to that stage where, you know, we are, we've, found, we've met the change, we've done the, perhaps I'm using the wrong words, but the work, the, the learning, everything that it's required um it's not a holiday <laughs> to be incarnated in this life it's work it's you know um we've been given a phenomenal opportunity 
to, you know, have the friends we have, the colleagues, the neighbors, the family, um, and one day to find, as Liz said, as a team, as a whole, because we won't do it on our own, to find this truth together um, as a, you know, group effort. Um, sorry, I couldn't find the eloquent words like um, Liz to, and yours to put it all together. Oh, no, but the message yeah. was well received. So, <laughs> Munir, uh, I, I saw your, your hand raised. Yeah. You can make your <laughs> comment and do our final prayer as well. Okay. All right. Okay. I just wanted to say that to me, truth is a never ending construction process. We give contribution to it, but there isn't such a thing as the truth and it's there and it's finished. No. It's a never ending process because we know that the way we see is like the example of the house. We look at one side, it's white, but then you go around and you see it's not white, it's red as well. So this process you know, never ends. And what we need is just people as serious as Kardec to use reasoning, to use experience and all the attributes that he used to uh, build the, um, you know, the basis of his spiritism uh, to, to make serious comments. And, and now that, you know, it's like giving a microphone to everyone, the internet and this way we can communicate what was restricted to TV and radio stations in the past. And, you know, a, a couple of our serious uh, magazines and newspapers. Now everyone has a microphone and, and they start talking gibberish because they had to say something. They have to call the attention, regardless of uh, the truth, the experience, the, you know, and then pride also you know, create a situation of polarization, you know, no, yeah, I'm right and full stop and regardless of what they say and, and what they do. I mean, that's that's how I see this situation now. That's very true. So now we're with you. I'll do the prayer then. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> 